This week, Stogie Geeks, episode 342. Welcome, everyone. I want to welcome everyone to watching the show. We definitely have some cigar manufacturers who I rattled some cages watching the show. We have retailers watching the show. And most importantly, we have the Stogie Geeks watching the show. This week, Drew Nelson and I welcome Greg Willis and Dal Redman of Emperor's Cut Cigars. Emperor's Cut Cigars is, is excited to announce... Uh, excited to announce the launch of a new line of cigars called the Jazz Series. The Jazz Series is going to be offered in three sizes. The wrapper is Sumatra Sun Grown from Ecuador. The filler consists of two types of Dominican tobacco that are completely complemented by Nicaraguan and Peruvian leaves. And finally, the binder consists of tobacco grown in Ecuador. Visit them online at Emperor's Cut. Dot com that's emperors cut.com or if you want a really clear understanding of what I just said in case you don't speak northeast <laughs> you can go to stogiegeeks.com episode 342 in our second segment we have cigar news sticks of the week and I'm sure we're gonna rattle some more cages stogie geeks buckle your seatbelts episode 342 starts right now This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote... Drew, who is remote over in Texas? Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. What's up, Stogie Geeks? Episode 342 starts now. I am freaking fired up for this interview. <laughs> this interview stems from our parent company, Security Weekly, when a awesome host who does Security and Compliance Weekly was at a awesome lounge. I was promised I gotta go there, then the COVID hit, and I can't go there yet because, you know, we can't fly. Well, we can fly, but we shouldn't fly. We should be safe. I cannot wait till we go back to the Cybersecurity Conference to eventually make my pilgrimage to the Emperor's Cut Cigar Lounge, but I am super excited to introduce to you Greg Willis and Dal Redman of Emperor's Cut Cigars. They are launching a new line of cigars. You can have, and hey, a retail store that gets it. You can purchase them online. You guys are, you guys are perfect, right? I love talking to smart people. You know, I really love talking to smart people. So um, without further ado, before I introduce you two, I have to do a roundtable of our guest. And we have a cameo visit, which I'm super excited to announce there. First of all, we have the little doc head from Texas, Mr. Drew Gavin. How's it going, fellas? It's going well. Good, good, good. good. What's up, Drew? Enjoying a beautiful day here in Dallas, so let's get it on. Let's do it. I have in studio someone who is starting to become quite accustomed to G-Unit Studios, Mr. Nelson DeMello. What's up? Good morning, everybody. Glad to be here. By the way, if you go to stogiegeeks.com and click on Stogies, Nelson's been writing some interesting pieces over there, so check it out. Uh, he, he reviewed... Uh, a couple of sticks and Yagua, and uh, super glad that you are um, 
joining in forces do. and coming aboard. So that's super cool. And we have a cameo visit for the gentleman who is responsible me to introduce me to the two gentlemen who I'm going to introduce you to on this show. He is also the host of Security and Compliance Weekly. You can check out his show at securityweekly.com. And it is Mr. Jeff Mann. Hey, Joe. I'm so glad to, that I happened to find out that you guys were finally going to be talking to Emperor's Cut and uh, wanted to come on and say hello to, the, to Gregory hey. since I met him, hey. I think, a year ago. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad it's yes. Out. yes, it was actually yeah. Hacker Halted. Yeah. Is that correct? Was that the it conference? Was Hacker Halted yep. down in Atlanta. Yep. We met at yeah. Maduro Cigars. That's, yes, absolutely. That's yeah, awesome. Good that's to awesome. see you again, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, if you want to stick around for the interview, if you have time to ask questions, by all means, just uh Absolutely. I'm I'm mostly going to lurk, but uh I'm out in my cabin so I can actually have a cigar and be appropriate. Yeah, Jeff does um a cybersecurity podcast as well and he actually has a cigar cabin. Most of us have a room <laughs> or a garage or something. He's got a cabin. Like, I mean, Sign nice. me up. Right? Dark inside. I should really just go sit on the porch and maybe you could actually see me. Whichever whichever works. And now <laughs> I want to introduce you to two gentlemen from Emperor's Cut Cigars who this interview is all about. And we are going to hear all about the business, how it started, how they got aligned into the industry, what the lounge is like, and what the Stogie Geeks can go to their website and uh, partake in purchasing some of these cigars. Yeah. Uh, do you guys want to do rocks, paper, scissors to see who goes first or do you want me to just pick one? You can just pick. That'd be good. <laughs> uh, I will go with Greg. He was the first one to, to answer my email. Greg, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Oh, man, I'm I'm just excited for our company, but I'm excited to be here with you guys. You know, we've been talking, you know, and off and on for about a year, and, uh, you know, we finally made it happen. So glad to be here. Yes, absolutely. Uh, welcome, and we're looking forward to hearing more. And then we have Daryl Redman. What's up, Daryl? What's up, What's going on, fellas? I am so glad to be here and be a part of this um, just to represent the cigar industry and as a whole. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You guys are fired up as well. So that's good. We're all ready to rock and roll. Um, first question out of the gate for um, most of the uh, first timers here at Stoey Geeks. Hopefully you won't be a stranger to the show. Um, it's, it's kind of a two-part question. It's kind of what made you want to get into the business? Uh, what were some of the decisions that you had to make to create what yeah. you've created? Uh, mm -hmm. And then the hard question is the dynamics of working together on projects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so um, the, the get together is we were all friends. Uh, there were five of us that actually started the company. There's seven of us that actually own it now, but um, there was a core of us that have known each other since college uh, Darnell Street, who's our managing partner and the founder of our company, he and I met as freshmen in college in Virginia. Daryl and um, Maurice, one of the other partners, are childhood friends. And then as fate would have it, all of us sort of met as young adults. And we used to take a lot of trips together, play golf, smoke cigars. And a lot of our trips ended up being, you know, primarily cigar cigar trips, golf trips, and some other things that I'd have to shoot you if I told you about them. But, um, you know, we, uh, we just decided to get together. And uh, roughly 10 years ago, we, we, we were smoking so many cigars, we, we said, you know, and I think we were really drunk one night, we said we ought to start a cigar company. We mm -hmm. sobered up the next day and just kind of went away with that. But then roughly four years ago, Darnell Street, came to us and said, you know what, I really think we can do this. I mean, we all have a love and passion for cigars. Um, the timing of it seemed to be right for a, a myriad of reasons. And uh, he's a good businessman. And he basically said, put up or shut up. And so we, uh, we capitalized the business. And, um, you know, then we started uh, trying to shop the concept. We put together a business plan, tried to shop the concept, got, got some no's, you know, I mean, the, the cigar industry is pretty insular. I mean, and it's very, it's a very, uh, in, in embracing industry, but you know, you, you got to get in, you got to show that you're serious about it as well, because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of consumers that are very serious about cigar smoking, but the people who produce cigars are very serious about it too. But ultimately we found um, a pathway in and, um, that's kind of how we, we, we started in terms of, you know, 
um, the, the business planning of it was, you know, it's, it's cigar smoking. And certainly, you know, we understood an, enough about that element of it that we were comfortable. What we had to do was collectively is put our we had to put our business acumen together. And all of us in some form or fashion, either through our professional development or e either through other businesses, you know, we had sort of the foundation to start a business and um, and understand margins and understand production costs. Uh, Darnell Street happens to be a supply chain expert. Uh, Greg Hurt, who's on our uh, partnership team, has a, a background in global logistics. We also have another partner with distribution. Daryl is a great salesperson. Uh, we have a lawyer who's part of our our uh, partnership group. Uh, I have a background in, in sales and advertising and media. So we had a lot of the components and the elements that we just had to try to figure out how to put them together. Yeah, who was going to do what? It, <laughs> I, I, let me let, let me tell you something. You 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 brought you, you're oh God. It's like it's like you're speaking my language, right? You, you <laughs> no, because usually every time I'm on Stogie Geeks, we do reviews. We do we we, we talk about companies. We interview companies, and then yeah. when we have our commentary on the second segment, sometimes it gets a little rough, and sometimes you know uh, you know I, I I can be like sandpaper to some of the vendors, right? Just telling mm -hmm. them like, hey, you know, these are the problems of the company. And then some of them, you know, write certified letters and 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 emails and want to question <laughs> want want to question my integrity, but yeah. uh, you know, it, it, at, at the end of the day, you know, your story th the common point of your story is that's how I started my my cigar shop. Bunch of guys hanging around smoking cigars and saying, "Shit, uh, I want to own one of these things. This is a freaking super cool. <laughs> this is a super cool, cool thing to do." So, so you, so that story is is one of many, which I think is super cool. But more importantly, you have people who are qualified in their other careers to handle yeah. handle all of the aspects of the business. You know, yeah. I speak to to brick and mortars all the time, either on air, off air. And it's amazing. I'm like, yeah, you got a corporate attorney? Well, I have a registered agent. I'm like, well, you should probably get one of those on retainer because issues come up. You know, um, what about <laughs> logistics and numbers? Well, I have a point of purchase sale, but okay, how many boxes did did you sell today? I don't know. How how many? Yeah. Uh, you know, and and and, and so it, it it becomes. It's like, is this a business or a hobby? And it sounds yeah. like, and it sounds like you guys all attacked it from a business perspective the numbers are the numbers right the yes, numbers don't absolutely. lie right, it, it, right, it, it's right. The, you know i'm a numbers guy right we track the metrics yes. of how many downloads that that we get on the show how many people visit the website right all, uh, all the analytics. you know and and owner paul azadorian gives me a no go uh, a, a a go no go for another show because it why we get great hits we have a, a yeah. phenomenal yeah. audience and it's at, at the end of the day it's about the numbers you know? No question. Now, no question. geographically, where are you located? Can can you kind of, um, speaking of numbers, 60% of our Stogie Geeks will listen to you on audio. So if you could kind okay. of create a, a visual of, you know, what you wanted to stop for the lounge, what one could expect, yeah. where it is, um, yeah. all the details yeah. of the lounge, and what kind of atmosphere did you want to provide, and how that atmosphere compares to other shops that are in yeah, the so, area as well because so you guys are from atlanta right yeah well we're we're, we're based out of houston so let me okay. clarify something for you um jeff met us at uh jeff met us at a a lounge in atlanta it was called maduro's we physically don't have a a lounge per se although okay. we're we're talking about that in the houston area but our company is based out of a, a suburb of houston it's called spring texas okay where three of our partners live. And so uh, we, we're not a lounge. We, we are just real time, you know, cigar producers, manufacturers is, was the model that we started. Now, again, because we see that there's opportunity, you know, along the lines of, uh, of lounge, we've been exploring that. We just got to find something that makes sense. And obviously all of us have to get beyond COVID to see how things are going to flesh out. Right. You know, sure. with, with with you know lounges that are currently existing you know we just got to see who's going to make it and who's not going to make it and even in our industry you know who's going to survive and who's not mm -hmm. so we'll we'll kind of investigate that afterwards i think you'll survive 
uh, yeah. let's let's call it how it is. Um, you guys raised the attention of Half Wheel. Right. Hey, Joe, right? Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. But but yeah, hold on, Jeff. Yeah. But you 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 you, you guys yeah. raised the attention of Half Wheel to announce yeah. your jazz series. That yeah. that's a pretty big accomplishment within the yeah. industry. So you you tells me you you, you guys are you guys are making a go of this, right? It's not like you it's not like you put it on your Facebook page and 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 your two thousand people. <laughs> yeah, you're on the radar. Freaking, you you are on the radar, right? That's what got my attention. That's what got my attention. I'm like, oh, they know about these. Here I am. This is like me going to Disneyland. Here I am thinking yeah. I'm, the, I'm the first in line, right? Yeah. And I turn the corner and there's a hundred people in front of me. That's the story of my life, right? <laughs> anyway, and you got there early. And I got right here. I am thinking, right? And I got there. Here I am thinking. I got a breaking news, a breaking cigar company, and then in strolls Half Wheel with the freaking announcement to just steal my thunder. That's fine. They do it all the time. It's super cool. I love those guys over there, right? Um. Anyway, Jeff, you had a question. Actually, I have two questions. One might be yeah. one that you're going to ask anyway. Uh, just an offhand question, not cigar related. You guys yeah. said you went to school in Virginia. Are you pirates yeah. by any chance? No, we're Hampton not. We're, 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 we're Spartans. We're Spartans. He's okay. a Spartan. Yeah. I'm a Duke. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, he went to James, uh, yeah, he went to got, James Madison. I've got family that uh, are very... Uh, have close ties. My my, I just had a granddaughter a month ago, and she she's a future pirate. So, oh nice, uh, nice, nice. Yeah. The question I wanted to ask, and this might be a a question that Joe will ask, but I'm going to jump the gun, since it takes him a year to turn the corner. Um, That's true. So you decide <laughs> to open up a a, a, a cigar. I don't Company. know what you call it. Place. Company. Company. How do you, yeah. how do you decide to go? How do you go? How do you go find somebody to uh, you know make the cigars, grow grow the tobacco? How, how does that process start? Yeah, yeah. Daryl, you want to take Darryl? it or? Well, it's well, it's all about relationships. Um, we gather some great relationships in our travels, and when we were trying to um, decide what type of cigar we want to produce, we leaned on the relationships we've had um, traveling throughout the country. So if I, in, in a related yeah, question, way. right, in a related question, <laughs> mm -hmm. I noticed uh, the Jazz Series, I believe I read, is yeah. made at La Aurora Factory. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. funny, Joe and I were actually just talking about this. We were next door at a retail yeah. shop looking at some La Aurora's. How yeah. was it working with Master Blender, uh, Manuel Anoa? Man, he is a freaking superstar. And he is just the <laughs> nicest man that you'll meet. I mean, you know how you, know how you meet people that uh, make you feel important? I mean, that's this guy is a global, you know, he's a global icon, if you will, within the tobacco industry. Right. Uh, but when, when we went down to the DR and, you know, and we sought out several blenders to be very candid with you. We interviewed blenders, you know, we were and, shopping. I'm sorry. I was, I was reiterating. We were shopping for someone to help us. Yeah. It's a yeah. Smart move. And so, yeah. And so, so, uh, he just made us feel real good about, about a partnership he made us he, he obviously is very knowledgeable we told him what we were trying to accomplish in a cigar told him that we were we wanted to uh you know not necessarily stay within the lines i mean we have a deep and healthy respect for you know the latino com culture and the culture of cigar uh, cultivation and production but we also wanted to mail in you know um you know our culture here in the united states and so we we told him what we wanted, and because he's so knowledgeable, he was able to translate that very easily. And it didn't take us long to come back with something that we felt like uh, would be a winner for us in the jazz series. So he's a great guy, nice man. Every time you talk to him, hey, my brother, how are you? I mean, he just makes you feel really special. Look, uh, that's really great. Good. Absolutely, nice absolutely. We actually yeah. had the uh, honor to interview him here at Stogie Geeks. Yeah. Uh, and yes. like yes. just uh, just uh, made he was talking about how when he taste the when he taste the blend for that particular batch, he takes notes and they'll plant like different trees around the plantation to get certain nutrients. He's a mad scientist, man. He, yes. he yes. went down a path. He yes. went down a path of the interview <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know, we, we put a, I believe it was a citrus tree. If, if my translation was right. 
Uh, you know, it was a citrus tree that he did one over there, and he plans it for the next thing, and and then he knows what he's gonna do, and he moves them around, and 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 he's just a mad scientist. And like, you know, if you're going to get into the business and make a go, like, it, it really comes to like five factories, really. If you know what I mean, if 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 to to be totally candid. And the good news is, you guys picked one of the five. So for the people that are in the know, so for the people that are in the know, you 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 picked one of the five, and and and, and yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it was a tough choice, you know what I mean, yeah. as to you know who's going to be close, who's there. But yeah. one thing I know about La Aurora is they're super into long lasting relationships. So you, yes. got, you yes. guys are in the right place, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I mean that's that's kind of confirmation for you know what we were trying to do, but um, you know we. We, we met some, and, and you guys know this, I mean, I, it, you know, it's, it's like being on a, a basketball court in the inner city where, you know, the, some of the best basketball players you never know about. I mean, it's, it's like that down there about tobacco production and cigar making. There are a lot of great, great uh, cigar manufacturers down there who we don't know about. And we smoked a lot of great cigars. I think it, it came down to who could help us accomplish what we needed in uh, a reasonable manner. And, um, and then of course, you know, the, the deal breaker was, you know, you get to meet with and work with somebody like, uh, Mr. Onoa, that's, man, that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. And so we feel very fortunate that, you know, he agreed to work with us and he was just so nice along the way. Just right. awesome guy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you made the blend. That was the original yeah. blend. Yeah. And then now talk, talk to us about this jazz. How yeah, so we're really excited about it. So when we went to the DR, and I'm going to let Daryl talk more about it, but here, here's the bottom line. Um, as a boutique, as a boutique cigar, we, we produced the Natural Pleasure line, which is Nicaraguan, and uh, we came to market with that, and, and we only had one cigar, and I think this is important just to let everybody know. And this was a business decision. You know, it didn't make sense to produce a a full line of cigars, not knowing how you were going to be received in the market. I mean, um, we, we understood that, you know, we had to overcome a lot of, of you know, pre, preconceived notions about cigars. Uh, there's a ton of them in the market. It's almost like going to the super, supermarket now and trying to buy a boutique beer. I mean, there's a thousand of them there. Sure. And so how do you, how do you differentiate and distinguish yourself in the noise? So we had all of those considerations. So we only came to market with one cigar and it was a Toro and uh, that Toro picked, you know, picked up really fast and it really caught us off, off guard by how well people were receiving the Nicaraguan cigar that we produced. And so immediately about three to four months into it, uh, after meeting a lot of people and people saying that they really enjoyed the cigar, the, the next question was, what's next? What's next? Mm -hmm. What's next? And we were thinking, you know, can we just get through this Toro and get our money back or at least, you know, you know break even? Good luck with that. Know? Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Good luck with that. You know that. But, Good luck with that. Yeah. yeah. But but we uh, we said, OK, let's let's uh, let's go. Uh, let's go find us a Dominican blend. Mm. And so then we started doing the homework. So I'll let Daryl take it from there and he can talk to you a little bit more about, you know, the Dominican and what we did. Okay, well, the Dominican blend, is, I guess, is like baking a cake. You know, there's different layers and different applications when you're putting together a cake. You know, you have the, the how much sugar you're going to put in it, how many eggs, all of the, the things that come into to play when, when just baking a cake or trying to describe how you bake the cake. Well, this jazz line is a, a complex line, kind of like baking a cake. We have different layers of flavors that we uh, feel complemented one another. You mentioned the two types of Dominican leaf that we have. Uh, the Cirolo and the Criollo. We have a little Peruvian leaf in there. And then the Nicaraguan leaf all coming together to make, make a nice, smooth cigar. Um, we complement that cigar with our notes of pepper at the beginning. Um, then it evolves to a little woody flavor throughout the cigar. And then it ends up with a great creamy flavor toward the, the last third of the cigar. I was really excited the first or second time I tried uh, the cigars and say, okay, this is good. No, it's a little bit better than I thought it would be. Um, great cigar. I'm enjoying it. Um, I hope everyone else gets a chance to enjoy just as much as I've been doing it. 
That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And, and let me let me just kind of tag on to that. So if, if you if you're thinking about the the inspiration for the cigar, uh, jazz music is something that all of us love. And if you know anything about jazz, I mean, jazz can be a lot of things, right? It can be straight ahead. It can be avant garde and bebop, and it can be smooth and it can be fusion. Yep. But um, but what we what we were looking to accomplish was uh, in the cigar, and Daryl sort of alluded to it in in describing it. Is that we didn't we didn't want the cigar. Typically, a cigar can pretty much reveal like right off the bat what it's about. But we also know that jazz music doesn't necessarily reveal right off the bat what it's about. It starts out slow and understated, and then it sort of builds upon itself. And then you know all of these disparate melodies, you know, from the the instruments, you know, sort of just kind of play their role to create this harmony. And so with the blend that we have, that's what we were trying to accomplish, just to replicate. You know what the, the genre of jazz is. We were trying to replicate sort of that that sensation in the cigar, and that's the reason why we have so many uh, long filler tobacco in it. You guys are so speaking my language. I actually went to a Berkeley EE in Boston College of Music. It's a music school. And, oh, nice. And pff, I, pff, Dave, t- they are convinced the Ramones came mm. are jazz influenced, and I'm like, well. uh Explain that to me. And believe me, it was a 45-minute conversation with my professor, and uh, I was in agreement afterwards, not because I wanted to get the, a good grade in the course, but uh, I, I was like, wow, like, you know, really? And the, so you you have uh, three different lines. One's called the Jazz Miles, uh, one is the Jazz Train, and one is the Jazz Dizzy. And yes. so uh, uh, having known a little bit about jazz, I'm um, having a visual of what each one would would taste like. Uh, if I was going personality wise, I would probably do the dizzy. <laughs> yeah. right? I, I, I would probably I would be like, "Yo, give me some of those dizzies," uh, and then and then and then I would do the train because I'm a, f- a big fan of robustos. Re- uh, oh, I thought it was because you were a train wreck. No, n- no, no. <laughs> no, nah, enough, uh, enough for the insults this week. I, I've reached my, I've reached my limit with with vendors this week. By the way, you want to definitely tune into next segment for that. I'm sure I won't be having word economy for that. Um, but anyway, um, so talk to like what you came up with the Empress Cut, right? Obviously, yeah, when yeah, when you yeah. start. A cigar company you have to have a vision of presentation right yeah. so mm-hmm. how did that come all about like the emperor's yeah. cut like because because to me it's like oh man like the emperor's cut like is it fit for an emperor uh, is it yep. is it good yeah, there you go uh, yeah, there you, got it. How, how, you already got it how 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 would an emperor <laughs> cut a cigar actually yeah. <laughs> he or she wouldn't right <laughs> somebody else would cut the cigar for the emperor exactly. you know what i mean if if i were an emperor uh, would I smoke an emperor's cut? I mean, you have to. You almost, you almost have to smoke that, right? If you're an emperor, what do you yeah. think, Nelson? Yeah. Oh yeah. If I, no, you. I plan on. <laughs> I'm smoking right now the Maduro. Yes. Yeah. And this is phenomenal. Yeah. You know something. I feel like an emperor right now. Greg. <laughs> Greg. <laughs> Greg. When you do my bidding. <laughs> when you ship me the cigars, right? When when yeah, you sent me yeah. the cigars, I said to Johnny. I said to Johnny. I says. I can almost guess the factory of where this was rolled. And the funny thing is, I'm super excited. I missed it by one, but number two was La Aurora. Like, when, when, so, so, so when I, and, and the reason what threw me off was the Nicaraguan component was threw me off. Mm-hmm. It had a very, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm talking about the uh, first series, not, yep. not the jazz, right? Yep. Um, the Natural Pleasure series. Uh, yeah. You you had sent us the Toro, which is a six and a half by fifty two size. Yep. Uh, yep. There and and the 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 lingering Nicaraguan component on the retro hail. I was like, okay, somebody good rolled these, right? That that was <laughs> yeah. my because believe me, I get we get a lot of cigars from a lot of companies that come in, and I now my thing to make it fun is I try to guess the factory, and. Because of the Nicaraguan um, component, my first guess was the Alec Bradley factory. My second guess was the La Aurora factory. I was like, because there's something about the cigar that uh, if you're retrohaling, make sure you do it slow. It, uh, it, it, it just lingers. I am, actually. It, 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 
it just lingers. And I, that was when I said, okay, these guys are onto something. Then I did some more research and I found out that you were on half wheel. <laughs> and I was like, okay, okay. So, so the good news is for me, a positive is like, okay, at least my palate isn't going to crap, right? At least I'm like, okay. And, and super excited to, to have you guys on. Um, with the jazz series, like what? Yes. So, talk to us a little about the Emperor's Cup and yeah. and and how that came about. Were there yeah. any names in the runner-up? I love this question too because yeah. Yeah. even when we interview other cigar manufacturers and stuff like that, cigar companies, I always like to know like what if if you want to disclose them, um, yeah. what what some of the runner-up names were because I think the Stoey geeks will really geek out on that. <laughs> well, well, I will say to you, um, you know. It, it's we, like picking a baby, of, right? It's like picking a baby yeah. name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we've done a good job. If I can use a baseball analogy, we, we've, we've had some good leadoff hits, you know, uh, in terms of our business. I mean, there, we've had some things that have gone really, really, really well. Of course, we've had some things that have been very challenging. But the name, the Emperor's Cut, uh, Darnell, our, our managing partner, when we were all talking about this, and, and you kind of, you actually told the story. We were saying, what is a name that's different mm -hmm. that uh, signifies power? And an emperor is is a, a name that sort of, uh, you know, denotes power. Right. right? And so it, it kind of takes power. So we we came up with Emperor's Cut pretty fast. I'm not going to lie to you. That's and awesome. we didn't really have a second. I mean, we were thinking about something um, that denoted power. When you smoked that cigar, how did it make you feel? Um and and uh, did it denote something of authority? And so um, we we did some research in history and Roman Empire and the Moors and you know and we we understood that you know from a historical standpoint you know about the Moors and, and the Roman before the Roman Empire became the Roman Empire the Moors were you know um, in some ways very a very dominant um, you know culture. And so we came up with emperors, and and then we we added cut because this is the emperor's cut of cigars. That's yeah. as simple as it. it nice. Yeah. Nice. To be honest with you. <laughs> that that's uh, that's super cool. No, sometimes you're all in on a name. You know, yeah. I was all in on my son's name until he was born, and he looked like nothing. Yeah. Like what the two names we 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 walked <laughs> Didn't in. Match up. We walked into the hospital. We had two names uh, involved. Uh, uh, two names. It was going to be this or this. And then, um, yeah, uh, it, it was like he came out. And I was like, he doesn't look like any of those names. And we were like, what do we do now? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, we, 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 uh, true story. We had a uh, his uh, pediatrician picked out before his name. <laughs> on the documents that you fill out at the hospital <laughs> and all that stuff, you know. But yeah, so so true story. But yeah, so um, That's awesome. so it was. You guys were all in on the Emperor's Cut. All and in. We thought it sounded regal. So I guess the next question is, right, when's the third one coming out? Because that's going to happen pretty soon, maybe, <laughs> right? You guys are on a roll. Yeah. So we, you know, when we, we, uh, we went to Nicaragua uh, back in January uh, for business, but also it sort of tied into, you know, the tobacco festival. And, uh, man, we smoked. I mean, we had to be iron lungs. We smoked a lot of cigars. Uh, trying to seek some inspiration for some additional blends that we anticipated bring into market this year. Obviously, you know, COVID has had such an impact on all of our businesses that, you know, you have to sort of refocus on, you know, driving, driving revenue and sustainability at this point. Right. So uh, I, I do anticipate that we will have another blend uh, my sneaking suspicion is, and I had a conversation with um, Darnell the other day, is that it, it's likely sometime in Q2 of next year. We want to give we want to give the jazz series an opportunity to gain some traction in the marketplace uh, because we think we have a really good cigar. So we we we'll kind of ride. So there's there's two thoughts on this. It's really important. We'll we'll ride. We'll try to continue to ride the momentum of the jazz series but the other piece of it is, is i mean shows like this expose us to markets that heretofore we hadn't necessarily been in so we see that the natural pleasure the cigar that you guys are smoking has and you know has plenty of run room uh runway left that you know we could still get a lot more mileage out of that natural pleasure blend 
you know, just by, you know, you guys being gracious enough to allow us on and exposing us to your audience and maybe a percentage of them will give us a try. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's smart answer. You know, it's all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers. (laughs) It's all about the numbers. Now I know our co-host, the little dockhead kid from Texas has a question. I actually was stepped out for a few minutes in case you guys didn't get my messages on the chat. <laughs> oh, so, what chat? What I've chat? Actually... What chat? With the Zoom chat? The Zoom, I'm, uh, I'm not on the Zoom the chat. chat. Oh, I'm You're sorry. chatting Johnny, not me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I stepped out. I actually just joined back the conversation here like a minute and a half ago. So okay. I apologize. I had some business that was going on outside my window I had to take care of. So there it is. So I apologize, gentlemen. But uh, um, so are you all from Dallas? Somebody's from Houston? Is that... Is that my understanding? We're, yeah, we're dispersed across the country. Um, I'm in Fort Lauderdale area. Greg is uh-huh. in Atlanta. We have three partners in the Texas market, and we okay. have two partners in Virginia, one in the D.C. market and one in the uh, Tidewater market. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'll have to get to know who your uh, market guys here in Texas and, uh, you know, give them some info uh, here in Dallas. I'm in North Dallas, so oh, I'm nice. in the Irving area. Yeah. But uh, oh, okay. my cigar, yeah, my cigar lounge is in uh Bedford, uh, Texas here. So it's just a few miles from here, but, uh, Thanks. yeah, I, I've heard, I've heard of the cigar line. Uh, I've yet to get my hands on some and get them smoke, uh, and get, and, and, and enjoy the smoke. Uh, but just, just listening to the description or reading the description and then, uh, look, you know, and talking to some people online, they, they said, this is a very, uh, it's definitely going to be a classic cigar for sure. So. Congrats, Thank guys. you. We'll, we'll make sure we'll make sure you get some cigars. Uh, we'll we'll make sure you get some next week. All right, righty, so, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that's done. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale, Daryl. Uh, yeah. When we can fly again, I will be three weeks out there. When you come down here, we'll be smoking some cigars together. I go to. Um, I always pronounce it wrong, and my girl gets mad. Las Olas Boulevard. I go to uh, the Havana. Havana, um, yeah. yeah, that's dude. a nice little cigar lounge. Every. Yeah, every time I'm in town, I do a Stogie Geek show from there. And let me tell you something. The guy's like, you know, like, come on in, do the show. It's great. And uh, I, I've i been trying to move down there for a while now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Mama Bear says no. So um, so I will visit there for three weeks and, that, and whatnot. So I'll definitely look you up for sure. Definitely do that. I, I'm the uh, the guide for Miami for those who come here to visit. Yeah, um, I know a little about nice. a little bit about everything here. I've been here about 23 years total. Yeah, um, I left Virginia thinking I would finally go back one day, and got down here and said, "No, I'm not ever going back." I hear. You. <laughs> I, have you ever got down? Nice. My my son is two years old, and and he's been to uh, Kaya Ocho uh, over in Little Havana. <laughs> And yeah. and let me tell you something. Like the, we, we, it's 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 amazing. It. I, I, if you go down to Calle Ocho, um, we're doing the launch. Our, our launch um, from Cuban Crafters, which is right down the street from there. Um, yeah. it's off of oh, yeah. 14th, and uh, Calle Ocho, of course, is off of 8th. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Uh, so, are uh, you guys distribute within shops? Yeah. How's that going? Yeah. So, yeah, so, so we we have a, a two prong model. Um, I don't mind telling you, you know, that when we started because of our background and our business model, you know, we, we, we understood e-commerce really well. And we said, you know, I mean, you can, you know, you can attack that market pretty aggressively, but here's what, here's what we learned fast that you guys knew, (laughs) you know, the cigar industry is a high touch point industry, right? You, you, you have to build your rapport, literally one customer at a time. And we also know that, you know, customers are not necessarily smokers are not there are some who are explorers who will buy a cigar site un, unseen or unknown about without knowing little about the cigar. They're just explorers. But the majority have to know something and have to have a frame of reference about about the companies. And so uh, we made a pivot pretty quickly and started touching uh, retail partners. Uh, but but we also understood, too, much like any good retailer and manufacturer, that you got to have good retail partners, people that will, who will understand your cigar, appreciate your cigar and have the confidence to promote your cigar, even to those cigar smokers who say, I know what I like. Right. And we know those types of cigar smokers. Right. I just know that I like a X or a Y and I don't, I'm not interested in trying anything else. We wanted to be in shops 
And we tried to we've attempted to approach shops where we had a sense that, um, you know, their their um, their hardware managers or the people whomever are confident in and making recommendations. If you someone says I like a nuclear one and I like X, Y, Z. Well, great. All right. I know that you've tried those three or four. You've been here. Why don't you give this Empress Cut a shot, a shot as well and be able to kind of stand on their knowledge and their confidence in the cigar. So we've grown our business in terms of retail shops in a very short period of time. Uh, we, we're currently in 19 states now, and we have grown our presence into, uh, we're just under 100 shops and lounges. And I think we would have been in a lot more, but COVID hit. And you know, the one thing that we didn't want to do is be a tone deaf business while people were struggling to survive, you know, going in begging for business. We had an online platform that we knew would help support us. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to sell cigars that way. That's uh, great. But we can tell, yeah, but we, we, we do want to go back and grow our presence. I mean, in particular, we want to go uh, more in the Northeast, although we just saw that, you know, New York City or state of New York raised its, its uh, tobacco tax to 75%. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, that's going to make a cigar, you know, as much as a card note. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you, you bring up a lot of interesting points, and uh, I like to break them down. I, I, you guys are just such a breath of fresh air for the industry, and and I sincerely mean that. Like you guys are, you know, you 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 just seem to get it, right? You use the word explorers, right? Mm -hmm. We like, right? We our target audience is the cigar explorer, right? Yeah. Someone who wants to go out there and try something different. And, yes. and 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 take a chance on a stick as opposed to the one who comes into the lounge and just smokes his or her favorite stick and then there you go. Uh, the, the the good news is that uh, there's room for everybody, right? Yep. Yes. And 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 the great news is you guys are set up on e-commerce. One of the things that I was impressed with you guys, and I actually took a page out of your book to actually use on a Stogie Geeks episode. Um, this was the first week of COVID, so I'm making it up maybe teens of March, 20 of March, when we were starting to, here in Rhode Island, be on lockdown. I had to do the show remote. The only one who was allowed in studio was Johnny. Everyone did the shows remote. And I noticed that uh, the Emperor's Cut, so Stogie Geeks, you want to go to emperors-cut.com and sign up for the newsletter. Because you guys had the uh, pandemic survival pack. Which, yeah. which, oh, kid. which, yeah. which, I saw which, that. Which, no, no, no. And, and, and so here's the point of my conversation. It's like, dude, the, I've never met these guys in my life yet. I've been trying to get them on the show for a while. We all know the story when, when the episode started. Right. And, 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 and it's like, uh, the, they freaking get it. Like they get it. Like, Hey man, you're, you're in lockdown under your house. Go to our website. We're going to ship you cigars in a humidor. Yep. It, and, and it was, right, right, right. Like, like you know, what I mean, you you, you want to be set up, or we, you know, we know you can't go to your lounge. We got a COVID survival. I don't know. It was it a. Co I think it was a pandemic. Uh, yeah, we, it was a pandemic. Yeah, we called it the homebound, the homebound survival kit. Yeah, the yeah. survival yeah. kit. Right. Freaking it was, great. It was. Yeah. It was. And 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 the funny thing is, when I speak to retailers or 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 or, or, or cigar companies, the, yeah. the, the, some of them not even online yet. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? Like, like this is this is great because it's great to go to work when you get an email of invoices of people who already paid. Like, it's a, it's it's like it's like hello, like you know, the welcome yeah. to uh, 1996, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, as soon as and so I always get your 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 emails. I'm on the email list and um, super impressed with the pivotability of the company yes. to cater to your audience of explorers who are trapped in their house. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so hats hats off to well that. Well done. Jeff, do you have a question? Or you I just do actually. Oh, uh, there you uh, go. I also <laughs> have, uh, you know, ordered a couple packs uh, you know, in the last year. Um, I'm curious, are you guys going to offer a, uh, a sample pack of any sort? to try all three jazz cigars at once? Yeah, so so that's a great question. Couple of answers on that. Uh, obviously a business imperative will, you know, we'll, we'll always be nimble enough that we'll make an adjustment. I think initially 
Um, our it's a limited production cigar. Uh, we got them. In, we have them in you know five and ten counts, and obviously we have them in twenty counts for some of our retail partners. Uh, right now, Jeff, I don't think the plan is is to to do the the sample pack right now. That doesn't mean okay. that it's not going to change. Uh, we've we've actually we just launched the cigar October one. And we've had really good response in terms of ordering. And, and, and what's been interesting, Jeff, is that a lot of people have been ordering the 10 counts. I mean, they're not even ordering the five counts at this point. And some of that yeah. is, is because uh, I think, uh, you know, we do, we do a good job with customer service. You know, we try to be a very transparent company. You know, when you order from us, you get a response back from us pretty quickly about uh, order received. Second piece of it is, is that we're going to send you tracking information pretty quickly and so i think combined with uh the how people receive that natural pleasure uh they were just kind of like well if these guys are producing cigars and i'm this is not about us this is just the risk you know what we perceive is happening with our customer base they trust us enough that we produce a good enough cigar that an investment on a 10 count is a pretty good thing and so they've been ordering a lot of 10 counts that's the majority of what we've been able to ship out in the last two days so my next question to both of you, then each of you, uh, yes. if I was, if I'm getting them one at a time, uh, what, what's the preferred order to try them? Yeah. D you want to take that one? Hmm. The preferred order to try the cigars. I definitely like this, um, the Toro, the miles that I'm smoking right now, the jazz series. Um, mm -hmm. if you haven't tried any of our cigars, this one is, is pretty damn good. That's all I can say. It's pretty damn good. Um, I like the size of it, the 56 ring ring gauge is perfect for me. Um, I would start with that one. If you're a medium to a uh, full body smoker, you'll enjoy the miles the most. I think the Gordito okay. would be the second one I'd choose. Um, if we're sticking with the, uh, the jazz flavor, um, because I like that size a little bit larger and it's a little, uh, shorter smoke. It's only a four inch cigar. So if I'm crunched with time, I might use the, uh, go with the Gordito. And then when I'm just, uh, relaxing, um, that Grand Robusto will take me to places I haven't been before. It's just like the jazz, <laughs> um, music that you listen to. Each one has a little bit of, uh, time you want to spend with it, um, in order to get the most out of cigar. Cool. Yeah, that yeah, great. yeah. I, I would say the same thing, Jeff. I mean, I, I think these orders good. I mean, the, the Toro is just, uh, um, man, it's it's a cigar that makes you think. <laughs> so if you mm -hmm. you know if you want a, a cigar that you, you smoke and you you sort of on each draw, you uh, you just go, whoa, what's you know what is that? Or, or what is that I'm tasting now? Outside of sort of the what's dominant throughout it all is, is this woodsy uh, essence, if you will. But mm -hmm. I mean, this, the cigar just, it, it just changes up. Like, you know, it's like watching a sax saxophonist, you know, play all of these funky notes that all of a sudden you go, Whoa, how did he do that? That's what that cigar sort of replicates. And I mean, I'm not saying that just for hyperbole's sake. I mean, it, it, it just is an interesting cigar. And then okay. to his point, the 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 um the train the grand robusto is just it's just kind of a straight ahead cigar it's just going to reveal you know all of what we were attempting uh to deliver in the essence of that cigar you're going to get it and then you know the dizzy is it's it's hitting you hard and fast and you're done and if you just wanted a good smoke that delivers some good flavor that's what it does i was i was watching the uh the heat getting uh pummeled by the uh, lakers the other night <laughs> <laughs> and I was sitting smoking the uh, the the, uh, the train, and um, I, I actually texted Greg. I said, "I just hit a note in this train that made me say, wow, this is a good damn cigar.'" And um, he he just giggled on the reply, uh, 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 laugh uh, laugh out loud. We're we're finding that the more we smoke it, the more we're enjoying it. All right. Yeah, yeah. You really have to. You have to. You know, if you don't have time to sit down and sort of meditate over it, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend that you smoke it. Smoke it when you got some time. You can really sort of pick the cigar apart, you know, because it, it really does deliver some very interesting things, you know, just by virtue of the types of uh, long filler we have in it. So you, you've made a, a conscious is, effort to go long filler. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. I, I have to ask. Uh, other than not having it all over your shirt, was there any reasoning behind that? Because I because I noticed the difference. I'm I'm uh, when it comes to long fillers, me me personally, yeah. I have my reasons why I like them more. Um, yeah. I'm I'm 
dying to hear yours. Like, what was the conscious effort for that? Well, well, you, you kind of hit on, you know, sort of one. But, I mean, again, we're a young company. Mm-hmm. And, and we're talking to people like you who, is, who are, you know, stokey geeks, right? Sure. And it's, it's a credibility issue as much as it is anything else. I mean, take all of the other, you know, maybe uh, quasi-scientific reasons out of it. Um, at the end of the day, if I have to have a, communica- uh, a conversation with someone like you, about the credibility of my company, I, I've got to be able to tell you that I know what I, at least I sound like I know what we're talking about. And I think that's, that's some of, that was as much of a driving force for our decision-making as anything else, mm-hmm. aside from some of the more scientific and, you know, the scientific reasons why you would do that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, to me, I can pick out what I try to do is when I get a new stick or I try a stick, uh, I don't I don't look it up, right? I try to just take my notes, okay? Is it short filler? Is it long filler? Which yeah. co- which country, right? And I kind of yeah. give myself a test, right? I give myself a test. Yeah. And when it comes to the long fillers, the difference, you know, other than the cosmetic differences of it, like going all over your shirt or whatever, the, the tobacco burns just a lot slower. Now I'm a bullet. Yes. Now I'm a bullet cut. So, uh, you yes. know, so so it's going to be a l- even more longer. slower, right? It's going to take even 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 longer to accomplish that. And I like that slowness, that almost like time stopping ability that a cigar has to offer. I know it sounds crazy, no, but you're, you're but, right on point. but but there but there are some times where you know <laughs> life's crazy enough, right? I want to be taken away for two hours and 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 go somewhere and go on a journey with with a cigar, um, you know. And and what I find with with the long fillers is they linger on your palate just a little bit longer as well, you know. And so you have slow burning; it lingers on your palate. You kind of get that umami feeling, you know. I had to do the. For the story geeks listeners, right? So, <laughs> for the ones who are just listening and not watching, and, and you know, and 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 it, 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 to me, it's just like an upgraded level of yes. of presentation. And yes. when I say presentation, I also want to put experience in there as well. Like you know, it it just it just brings you to another level, as opposed to some that just you know throw fillers in there and then go away. And then I also notice, and and then I'll shut up and we'll ask a question. See if Drew over there has a question. He's been kind of quiet. Um, I also notice not only does it linger on your palate, but the the cadence as to how much smoke it releases on your palate delivers it. And it's almost like a conveyor belt, right? To me, right? <laughs> if I if I had to create a visual, which we have to, right? Uh, you know, it, it's like a conveyor belt, and it's like you just take it all in, and then you know, if you retrohale or if you don't, whatever you do with the smoking, and, and you're like, man, like this is something really cool, you know? As opposed to some some short fillers where you know, if I'm doing computer work and going like that over there. And then I'm, I look down and I'm like, yep, that was a short filler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, yeah, absolutely. So it, it, it just it just proves sometimes like, you know, you, you've you've you you've taken that into consideration. And we also yes. want to make sure that it had a nice, clean finish um, when you finish smoking the cigar as well. It doesn't linger as a, um, a bad aftertaste um, on your cigar on your palate afterwards. Yep. The, you know, you also bring up a good point out. It, 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 it's tough to create a stick that you can smoke down to the nub, especially mm-hmm. if you bullet cut it as opposed to either V or the guillotine cut. It's really tough. Right. And and mm-hmm. when I had the Emperor's cut and I was trying to guess the factory, I was like, you know, it, it's just lingering like that. I, I, I knew it was Nicaraguan right off the riff. And I was like, "Wow! Like it, 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 it's it's you're really getting onto something here." So, hats off nice. to to you and your team for putting that all together. And yeah. hopefully, the numbers make sense. <laughs> Drew, <laughs> they have to. Drew, what are you thinking over there in Texas? <clears throat> no, I'm just I'm just now I'm just doing my homework over here on the uh, jazz series, and I was just thinking of some of my jazz uh, favorites like Fats Weller, and I was thinking. 
I'm gonna have to send these guys some notes on a Fats Waller, uh, Waller, <laughs> uh, you know, blend, you know, because I, you know, I and it's cool. I like that. I like that they're, you know, you got the dizzy, you got the miles, you got the train. So I, I know where this is going, and so I'm just kind of, you know, thinking of the, you know, the cigar matching with the, uh, with their, with the music, you know, with with the, mm. uh, you know, and that's just like, oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna enjoy this because this is. This is one of the, uh, yeah, this this right here with a nice scotch or a nice whiskey and just sitting out in the cigar. Yes. Uh, this is going to be very, very uh, awesome weekend for me in a couple weeks once I get everything together. <laughs> you will. You will. N- Nelson's yeah. having the Maduro now. Right? Well, this what, is actually, so what, what, what I, I was going to mention, I know this is all about the jazz, right? And, and I unfortunately haven't had a chance to try one yet. N- me neither. That's okay. But. The world hasn't. It came out in October. I want to no, I want to give a shout out to the Natural Pleasure, which, by the way, might be the sexiest name for a cigar in the industry. <laughs> natural <laughs> Pleasure. I mean, that's freaking great. I don't know who came up with that. Especially I put my deep voice on it, the natural. Oh, pleasure. yeah. I hear yeah. that. Um, all right. This is getting weird now. But, um. <laughs> That I can <laughs> I can picture I can picture I'll tell you one thing, Daryl. If you did a Stogie Geeks commercial, we have to use your voice. Oh yeah. I'm I'm there for you. Yeah. You know what- <laughs> but I did, Greg Daryl, I want to give a shout out to the natural pleasure. I, I had the Toro. Fantastic. Fantastic. Retro Hill, fantastic. You're I having mean, that now. You mean you yeah, have I know. It. You're having it now. Uh, yeah. That's it's awesome. freaking amazing. Awesome the smoke production. Pleasures. It pairs well with a uh, Uncle Nearest as well. Nice. Oh, Uncle Noted. Nearest. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Did you notice the the the, the lingering Nicaraguan, or, or am I off my rocker? Yeah, I'm not you. No. Okay. <laughs> right. I don't know. I'm not a factory nerd. No. I'm not a factory nerd at all. I just, you know, I just, uh, you don't notice it like, Hank, you can't taste that on the damn palate right now? No, I'm not a factory guru like no, you. He's drinking whiskey. I he's... just enjoy good cigars and drinking. What's wrong with that? <laughs> there you go. Well, so do I. So do I. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, cheers. <laughs> Absolutely. Daryl. <laughs> Absolutely. Drew, anything else you're gonna add? No, man. These guys are these guys are right on. I mean, I, I, I'm liking what I see on their website. Real deal. Uh, easy, easy, easy to navigate. Uh, the journey. I'm enjoying that. That. Uh, the blog that's there and uh you know this is uh definitely you can definitely tell that this company uh, understands uh what what they're doing uh in in the business and uh, whether they're new or not they definitely got a good base um for sure and you know and like you said it's nice to have somebody that has e-commerce uh on their website for their cigars and and just and just enjoy uh you know shopping and and doing it with ease. So that's a great uh, point, Drew. That's a great point, Drew. Uh, Greg yeah. and Dal, you guys are very organized for a new company. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we are, we you know. Hey, yeah, first ahead, of all, first of all, you showed up to the Story Geek interview on time, right? Which is like <laughs> you, usually in the cigar world, like you know, one p.m. Eastern Standard Time is like you know one twelve. Then we do the audio check, you know what I mean, and all that yeah. stuff. Right? But you know, you know what else to that too? Have you have you have you seen their corporate commitment scorecard? That's pretty cool. I, I like that they are sharing this. You know what it takes. You know the commitment it takes to really be in this industry. It can be fickle at some, you know, at times. But you think? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but to, to to share, you know, their you know their their, their process and the thought process. Uh, the internal business process right here. I mean, it's nice. It's you got the financial process, the inter, uh, internal business process, uh, learning and growth, and, and, and of course customers. You know, so these are things that really grab it. You know, navigate people uh, when they see this type of commitment, and they're like, you know what, I, this is something I can get on board with, and you know, takes them on on a, on a discovery of a lifetime. So, kudos to you guys. You guys are doing this correct. Thanks. I like yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so, um, what what now? Once you evaluate your projects and 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 where you guys are going, like you know, it, when you first started this journey, uh, how many years has it been? So we we've, we've been a business for four years. Okay, we've we've been we've been like hyperactive for the last three and we've been in market for just over two years okay so when you started this journey for slash two years ago really 
of, mm-hmm. of, of getting things going. Um, what did you think was going to happen? And what has changed that you're like, oh, we're never going to do that again. Oh, holy crap, we should do that again. Like, what what, what was it? Because like you said, so, sometimes the industry and in, in, in Nelson and Drew, you know, mm. we, we have interviews every week, uh, you know, and, and you know, um, it's not a, it, it's a friendly industry, but oh, yeah. it's tough to get shelf space. A lot of partnerships. Right? Yeah. It's tough yeah. to get yeah. shelf space. Have you been yeah. to any trade shows? Have you, um, I know COVID's put, put a huge damper on that. Are you looking yeah. to kind of go that route? Are you kind of going to yeah. kind of stay true? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, man, that's a really, that's a really, uh, thoughtful question welcome uh, to stogie yeah. geeks <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you sound like an emperor <laughs> no, no. <laughs> i was called i was called a bad emperor well yesterday played. well played i was called a bad emperor yesterday but anyway <laughs> really? yeah you you'd have no, to go to that... stogie geeks live uh, and stick on the second segment for that but okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no that, that's a that's a good question so a couple of things let me see if i can kind of break down uh, a couple of them the first one was um you know being an, an upstart and um and you know you talked about the numbers so we're really driven by the numbers and we're also pretty you know we're, we're fairly shrewd in terms of, you know, where do you compete, right? And so when you go to the bigger trade shows, at least initially for us as an upstart, you know, we we evaluated our ability to fight through the noise as an upstart. And in some respects, uh, some of the bigger shows, it didn't it didn't necessarily make sense for us to to do that from an investment standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, we 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 believed enough, Joe, in in our in our hustle that you know we could because of geographically where we were located i mean we got daryl in south florida i'm here in in a a pretty big market in atlanta we had dc covered um uh and i didn't i failed to mention and and please forgive me we have a a woman who's part of our ownership group and uh her name is uh, timely bush they call her timmy and she had the ability to to do a lot of traveling so we we were and then we had Dar- uh, sorry uh, Maurice in the Hampton Roads Virginia area. So we we had the ability to through our own grit and hustle we could touch a lot of places and put our our fate in our own hands if that makes sense. Where we would have sort of that one on one that direct line of communication with a shop owner or a group of shops, and so. That's really the direction that we took initially. Obviously, the TPE and some of these other things might make a little bit more sense. And I think we were evaluating, you know, to go to those uh, when it when the time was right. Obviously, all of that stuff has been affected by COVID now. So as we continue to grow and we continue to sort of uh, uh, develop our, our mind share throughout the nation, then it might make more sense for us to to make the kind of investment to to stand out because if you don't go there and don't stand out, then you know you can get squashed by some of the the bigger names in the in the industry going to those shows. I mean, it's a frame of reference thing, right? Consumers can tend to go where they they know. Like there are explorers, and 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 you made that point to us. But we also know that there's a real, very real element of this. If somebody sees Drew's Drew Estate's big display or Rocky Patel's big display or whatever the case may be, they're going there first. Right. And right. that's where there's a, a perception issue where they go there thinking, you know, those are the, where the best cigars are. And we know that there are plenty of cigar manufacturers out here, particularly in the boutique space, who are doing great things, too. Mm-hmm. You just got to figure sure. out where do you fit. Right. And, and can you compete? Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are internally centered, which is my favorite type of company, as opposed to externally centered, who worry about what other people say about them and then pivot. So, no. uh, you know, never has been the case with us. No, that that and and you you guys also have something going for you. Where all of your, I guess you could say, executive management are positioned geographically. Let's face it. If I were, if I or or Nelson or Drew were to do a list of hot spots, cigar hot spots, like you know, South Florida, Atlanta, Texas, it's not like one of your partners is sitting in Wyoming, 
right? right. Or right. or <laughs> Idaho. Sorry for any story geeks listeners from Wyoming <laughs> or Idaho. But but no, it, you, you you know DC. Like DC is 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 a is a huge hot spot. New York is, and you know what's kind of crazy. You know you had touched upon this before with the taxes, right? Now with the New York tax, I mean you know it it, it there's gonna be some some leeway room with 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 how it's a percentage of the box and it's not retail and all of that stuff there i mean if you do the math on an average stick you are about two dollars more per stick and let's face it whether you're a stogie geek host or whether you're listening to stogie geeks or whether you're being interviewed or whichever or you're a co-host at the end of the day we're gonna pay for it it's just yep. like milk. It's just like gas. It's just like tires or anything else that went up COVID or anything else like Sometimes that. Sometimes not as important. It, it, but. <laughs> sure. But, but yeah. right. But, but you know, the, 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 at the end of the day, they're going to end up getting it. But you guys are all in the geographic hot spots that you need to survive. And maybe it might be 2022, 2023 before you consider going to a mainstream trade show. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. At least you know where you are in the space. And that's important. Yes. That is super important. Now, I have interviewed, and, and Drew and myself and previous Stogie Geek hosts have interviewed companies, and Jeff certainly does in his cybersecurity uh, podcast over there as well, right? Um, you know, like some companies don't know where they are in the space. You guys know where you are, you know where you want to go. You've created blends that you passionately feel and feel that if, if, if someone tries our cigar, they're probably going to reorder them, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, so, so you, you're, you're very comfortable. And the point of my rant is that it's, it, it's amazing that you've been in the industry for just two years actively, you know, as far as going for it, you know, three years, right? And and you already know who you guys are. Yeah. And and I want to make sure that I get that point across. I, I definitely realize that from just talking to you two. I would love to do a panel of all seven partners and have one rowdy conversation as well <laughs> about all no, about all the aspects, you know, all the aspects of 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 the business. And if you ever wanted to do that open invitation whenever you guys have that powwow we can put that together because i think that it's super important for the story geeks to understand that but i also yeah. think that some of the retailers can take a page out of your book man that's a big compliment wow. i'm just telling <laughs> you, you. no i'm just telling you i'm just telling you no because you know there, there are some there are some interviews we do and we don't talk about a lot of business structure because when the answers they give me they're, they're, they're just not there. You know what I mean? They're just not there, you know? And, 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 or we would get into more of a branding and marketing and I could take this interview in, in any way you guys want to go. But I, I really think that for your, for your second interview and your second appearance on story geeks, by the way, op yes. open invitation, uh, we got to get some more pot partners on, on yeah. your end, because okay. I think it's super important for the business aspect to really, really get across. Because you guys are saying, hey, we know that there's a trade show, but hey, we're not ready yet. And you know something? We know we're not ready yet. You're being who you are. And by yes. the way, if other companies could be who they are and not pretend to be something else, and I can go and rattle names, I probably will next segment, right? But, <laughs> but you know. Um, stay you know, tuned. D stay tuned. <laughs> Right, <laughs> definitely, but 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 definitely, you 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 guys just have a grasp on that. I I would echo that, Joe. Absolutely. I was thinking back to the answer you gave when Joe was um asking about you know where you're going for 2021, what's next, and you were yeah. talking about hey, I I gotta wait and see what's you know what's going on with jazz, is that going to get traction? Where's it gonna go? I love yeah. that iterative approach. I I think that's fantastic. So I, I agree. Like we don't get that kind of feedback from from they just want to manufacture manufacture throw things out and sometimes i get that you know you want to throw things out you want to test the market but doing it iteratively staying true to what you what you what you have and seeing where it goes but believing in it and staying behind it i think it's fantastic joe absolutely hit it on the head 
Yeah. No. I, I'm Drew. What do you think? Am I crazy? Well, yeah. No, man, you're crazy. Come on, man. I don't hang out with crazy people. I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. Like, no, normally, no, no. Like, like, normally, you know, no. They say, well, you know, I I created a cigar for the blue collar worker, and it's gonna be eight dollars and whatnot. And you're like, okay, cool. Like, uh, that was your ma- <laughs> that was your marketing strategy. That's like, it. like, like, can can you know? I I, I you know. You know, I created a cigar that smells like perfume and crap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's just like, and no, it's and it's only $8, right? And, you know, I created a cigar that was 12 but since the guy left the company, we're not going to make it 17 I'm talking about Drew State. Uh, uh, and, you know, and, 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 <laughs> and you know, and, 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 you, know, and, and, you know, and it's like, and, and people buy it. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, people, you know, but again, you know, I don't know. I, I, from, from, from my standpoint, I can honestly say it's a privilege and an honor to be a host of Story Geeks. I don't want to speak for my co-host. I don't know if they were drafted or signed something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it, 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 and, 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 and to hear your story, you guys are a breath of fresh air. Because you remind me of an old school interview guy we had, George Rico from Grand Habano Cigars, right? And okay. when, right, yeah, good cigar. right, right, right. And when you go and, and you talk about George Rico, right? And it's like, okay, yeah. um, you know, he made 60 ring gauges before they became popular. And then, you know, ooh, he went online, and a lot of people are like, wow, oh, stuff's all available online, this and that. Well, it's it, the shops, the, there are some good stuffs that he makes, and, and, and his line is pretty extensive that he's forgot yeah. years that it's come out. I've had to, like, correct him and say, it came out in this year. He's like, no, I don't think so. And then at the end, he's like, yeah, Joe, I think you were right. It did came out in that year. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, because, like, he's done so many things. But the funny thing is, it, he, like you, is internally centered. They don't try to be the bigger company. They don't try to go out and focus on the 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 big trade show and 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 and, and take all their chips and put it in that show and then maybe potentially come up short. And and it's funny right. how both of the um industries, cybersecurity and cigars work the same way right when a cybersecurity company comes on the market for us they go to a trade show for like five years and they have the biggest boots and they get a magician like you get a magician to do the thing or they get a clown not a clown i, I, I digress they get a magician Jesus. or they're serving or they're serving freaking steak tips and all of that stuff no and then five years later five years later they don't go to a trade show because they blew their budget on that and they and and, and, yeah. and by the way if you're going to a booth for a trade show, why would you have a magician there? It's supposed to be about your product. I thought you were kidding. Right. No, I'm not kidding. A freaking oh magician yeah, there? Uh, ask Jeff. He's seen. He's been seeing it for. Uh, I don't want to expose his age, but he's been seeing it for at least ten years. That's fucking right? bananas. That is bananas. Jeff, Jeff, am I right or wrong? Closer, closer to forty years. Okay. <laughs> Mud on the meat. Jeff, right? I mean, if you go to a trade oh, yeah. show and you see a booth with a magician, don't you want to see the product so you could see if any of your clients would benefit from the product or? No, frankly, I'm more likely to just walk on by because if if you're if you're re- reverting to tricks like that to try to draw the audience, then yeah, I, what it tells me is you don't believe in your product, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Now and it can't stand on its own, it's right? Point. Now before yeah. I get hate email or any certified letters or anything like that delivered Jeez. next week, it's... okay? Uh, you know there are a couple of exceptions exceptions in the cigar world like for example avo right avo was a phenomenal musician avo senior phenomenal music jazz musician if, if you will right and, and and phenomenal podomo always puts on a show and plays the drums on his thing that's different because that's exposing the element of the the leader it's real uh, yes, it, 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 yes it's saying hey yes. man you know uh, I think it's super cool, and, and he drums, and he does all of that stuff. I think you should produce an album with cigars and yeah. and go for it. Like, you know what I mean? You know, some nice freaking Cuban music. Uh, people would eat that up like Eminem stuff. Yeah. Either the rapper or the candy, either one, right? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, 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 like people would eat that stuff, but, but that's exposing who you are. And 
you know, when, when you guys do a trade show and, and, and you guys are ready, then, then you'll be ready. And, and yes, it's, it's just great answers. Anything else you want to add before we do a, a wrap up around of everyone? No, I mean, you know, we've, we've done a, you know, this has been a great interview. And I mean, I think uh, your audience uh, gained some insight to us, uh, to your point, you know, you can order from our website, www.emperors-cut.com. Uh, we got two series up there. Uh, the Nicaraguan, uh, which is the one that kind of put us on the map, is there, and we still have plenty of inventory. The beautiful thing about what you were sort of alluding to is that, you know, we've done a good job with supply chain management, and even during COVID and even with some of the uh, restrictions that are taking place down in Nicaragua and uh, in the Dominican Republic around COVID, you know, we've planned our business out in a manner that uh, not unless, you know, there's just this onslaught of uh, orders, you know, we we have the capacity to handle uh, orders because we have the supply. So just want to let, you know, your audience know that if they're interested in giving us a try, go to our website. Our process is fairly seamless and it's fast and it's transparent. Awesome. Awesome. Daryl, you're on. Well, if you're ever down in the Florida market, definitely look me up. Um, I'll take you out to all the cigar lounges that we do support. And uh, we look forward to um, joining your next uh, interview, and hopefully we get all the team on. Are you down there at Havana Republic? Uh, no, we're in Cuban Crafters, yep. Top Shelf Cigar Lounge, Cigar Brothers, and um, Juan Carlos Cigars in um, the um, Coconut Grove area. Okay. Uh, you go down to Havana Republic on Los Alas Boulevard? Oh, yes. You tell him that you are on Joe's Stogie Geek show, he'll treat you all like right. a king. I will like be an there. emperor. And, and, like and, an emperor. oh, yeah, no pun intended. I should have said emperor. I should have said, said emperor. I should have. Damn right. it. That's the story of my life, Craig. I don't know. <laughs> right? right? No, go down there. Uh, you know, if you go down there during the day, opens up. You tell him he's been on my show. You tell him that you've been on the show. He's been on the show. Definitely give him a stick and try it out. Super I cool. I will definitely do that. Uh, it's the Havana Republic. Super cool guys. Awesome. Awesome. Got it. Jeff, thank you for introducing us to these two fine gentlemen. You're most welcome. Hey, I have one last thank question. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, we have another yes. question. Go for it, Jeff. When I get my hands on a on a Jazz Miles, what what are your recommendations for pairing as I sit out here in my cabin? What what should I have think? in my other hand? Well, well Go ahead, my, my pairing. My pairing would be uh, Uncle Nearest, and I drink it with one one cube of ice and one cinnamon stick centered in the bo in the glass. Sip on that with the uh, the Toro. Um, put a a bullet cut on it, and you'll enjoy it for a couple of hours. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right, there you go. There you go. Nelson, anything else you want to add in? No, I just want to thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Like I said, I, I, this was great for me. I'm selfishly, I love being on the show because I get introduced to new cigars. Uh, got introduced to Emperor's Cut. Like I said, loved the Toro. Smoked it. The uh, sexiest name ever. Natural pleasure. It's Natural pleasure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Johnny, I hope you capture that. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, but no, sincerely, thank you. I'm going to be ordering the jazz myself. Absolutely going to be trying it. This is a fant if it's a, If it's as good as this Natural Pleasure, I can't wait to smoke it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Greg and Daryl, please don't be a stranger. Uh, you've already added me to the press release notes, so we will keep our listeners posted as to any of the press releases that you have out. Thank you for being on Stogie Geeks, and we wish you much success uh, there in the future. And I cannot wait to hear more from emperors-cut.com cigars. So Stogie Geeks, check them out. You go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 342. And all of the show notes are there. And check them out. Sign up for the newsletter. Gentlemen, thank you for being on Stogie Geeks. We'll see you next time. Stogie Geeks, when we come back, we have some cigar news and some of the sticks that we've been smoking. We'll be right back. <laughs>